In today's video, we have the latest NHL trade talk around the league. We're talking about a potential blockbuster deal between the Montreal Canadiens and New York Rangers. Plus, we have the latest updates on the Leafs and Sens and some ways to kind of free up some salary cap space, especially for signing Shane Pinto in Ottawa. We have an update on the salary cap for next year, waivers news, some signings, and more from around the league. A lot coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have a variety of NHL news and some trade rumors to take a look at today. Uh, first up, we did get word from uh, the NHL, and Gary Bettman put out some information in a statement earlier confirming uh, that the salary cap should be rising for sure for next season. Uh, it should be somewhere between 87 and $88 million. Of course, currently it sits at 83.5. Uh, basically, he said that the escrow, uh, which is being paid back from the players for the uh, work stoppage during the pandemic, uh, will be uh, all paid this season for sure. To be honest, based on the calendar year and how the fiscally, how everything works with the NHL, in theory, I wouldn't be surprised if it was technically paid before the puck even drops next week when the season gets underway here. Um, so at the end of the day, that's a good thing. That, that'll be paid back. The cap will go up uh, with an $83.5 million cap and a 5% increase, which is what is in the, the updated uh, version of the CBA that they extended a few years back, uh, would be $87.6 million. They'll probably go 87.5. They may go to 88. I'm not sure. I think there is a... An accelerator as well the NHLPA can use. I don't know if that's part of this or not. Um, obviously, uh, 5% increase is still really good considering what we've had in recent years. So at the very least, uh, you're going to see you know, a $4 million increase. Hopefully, it could be a little bit more. So we'll see where that goes. But at the end of the day, it's going up for sure. More than a million dollars, which is something that all teams have been begging for considering how tight they all have been against the cap. In case you missed it earlier, we'd have a video out with all the latest news from the NHL waiver wire. A good group of players yesterday, which I know some teams, especially Ottawa, were and their fans were kind of nervous about losing some players, but everything worked out. They all cleared. So I know Jacob Bernard Docker, Igor Sokolov, especially were getting a lot of attention by the fan base and uh, they were not picked up so they will already be assigned and they'll be re reporting to the Belleville Senators American Hockey League training camp here now and uh, will join that club and be eligible to be called up later so that's certainly good news uh, for them and we did get a bunch more players uh, on waivers I think there was 12 in total if you want to get the full details of the waiver wire uh, scoop from today certainly check out the video that I posted uh, earlier this evening. An update as well on a, on a situation that we talked about back a, a week or so ago in the Western Hockey League uh, in Canada, the Canadian Junior League. Uh, head coach uh, Kevin Constantine, who has coached in the NHL before on a few different occasions. Of course, this is for the team that uh, was known as the Winnipeg Ice. Of course, they moved during the summer and they're called now the, the Winnetachi Wild uh, in, this, in uh, Washington State. Uh, he has been suspended indefinitely. Now, of course, when he uh, we'll get in some hot water before essentially he was suspended pending investigation and the investigation has been complete and now they're confirming that uh, he has been suspended uh, indefinitely what they're calling for making derogatory comments in a discriminatory nature it was the exact verbiage they used uh, there was some reporters that said they had heard that it had something to do with a racial slur Sounds like they were right. Uh, 2025 is the earliest that he can ask for reinstatement. And just like the NHL has done with some of their people that have been in hot water recently, like Stan Bowman, Joel Quenville, etc. Uh, they, um, Kevin Constantine, if he wants to ask for reinstatement, he has to apply for that and go through a process with the WHL commissioner and go through a whole review. And I'm sure they'll have to show you know, what he's done to learn from his mistakes, etc., etc. I don't know what they'll be looking for exactly, but uh, that's something that will be uh, not even something he can consider doing for a couple, well, about a year and a half. So uh, it's just, you, we don't need situations like that around hockey or anywhere as in sport any longer. I mean, that's something that's, unfortunately, we've seen happen in the past and we need the people that have been guilty of that to learn from their mistakes. And, you know, there's no room for that at all anywhere. So hopefully like i said they do the right thing moving forward but at least they got this suspension 
um, done right, in my opinion. A few more players as well have been released from their professional tryouts at NHL training camps, trying to get a contract for the year. The Anaheim Ducks did release Scott Harrington. The defenseman was there on a PTO. Uh, however, he is going to um, go to their American Hockey League camp, and it is possible he could end up playing there for the season in San Diego. And the Detroit Red Wings had uh, Artem Anisimov as well in camp on a PTO, and he has also been released so a couple of guys the veterans they're looking for work that did not work out with their successful ptos uh we get another prospect signing as well the san jose sharks have signed prospect left winger quentin musty uh so he gets his three-year elc uh, he was the 26 overall pick in this year's 2023 NHL draft. So, of course, they've seen lots of musty since then between, uh, you know, their rookie camp and then training camp. So, obviously, he's had a good showing. They're quite pleased with him to get him his contract. And, obviously, he'll be uh, looking forward to getting into the lineup down the road. But for right now, I'm sure he'll be uh, continuing to be uh, playing in junior for this season. Uh, now, some, some trade talk around the league. A couple of things I want to start with. Uh, one, let's start with Ottawa uh, because we know the whole uh, situation with Shane Pinto has been the hot topic around the NHL where he's, uh, along with Jamie Drysdale, the main restricted free agents that remain unsigned. Uh, now, according to an update today that came from Bruce Garriock and Claire Hanna of TSN, saying that Garriock says that he says there's some people that might say he's wrong, but he still says that they're, they're close on a contract, that they're no more than maybe a few hundred thousand apart. Uh, essentially, he's looking for somewhere in that 2-3 to 2-5 range. And as of at least a couple days ago, the Sens weren't quite prepared to go there just yet. But Bruce Garrick made a, a good point in reference something else that we might see. And obviously, the uh, agent for Shane Pinto was Louis Gross. I've mentioned that on a few occasions before. Louis Gross is also notorious for playing hardball with GMs and having his clients sit out with hold services. This has happened. Like it's a it's a movie we've seen numerous times. This is just another sequel in that chain of events here. But at the end of the day, last year with uh, Rasmus Sandin, who's one of his clients. Near the end of training camp, they saw a situation with the Leafs where the Leafs were running into, unfortunately, a bunch of uh, injuries on the blue line. And Sandine told his agent, we got to get something done. They really need me in there, obviously, with all these injuries. And they were able to get something done pronto. And with one, like they say, with one phone call, everything can change. It did. They got him signed. He got to camp and was available. So could we see a similar thing with Shane Pinto? I mean, obviously, the Sens are a little thin at center, especially where... There's some concern that Josh Norris is still not quite 100% healthy and may not be ready to start the season, which is a major red flag considering how long he's been recovering from his shoulder surgery. Uh, Obviously, they said he had a setback the other day, didn't skate today. They're optimistic he'll play a preseason game on Saturday, but based on how things have gone, I really don't think that's going to happen. I think they're more concerned than they're letting on. And I think that with you take Norris out of the equation and you take Pinto out of the equation with being unsigned. Yes, Timmy Stutzel is a great number one center, but that leaves your depth awfully thin. And you have a season where you're expecting big things. You get new ownership. You want to take a big step forward. Everybody's under pressure to get into playoffs. You can't be going into the playoffs or into the regular season, sorry, with that thin of a center depth. You just can't. You need Pinto signed. So they need to find a way to bridge this gap. And hopefully Gary Ox right that maybe we'll see a similar scenario that if they are a little bit more forthcoming with Norris's injury, then maybe Pinto will put a push to tell his agent to get it done because he needs to get there to help his team. So hopefully that works out. But the Sens are still looking to shed some money. Obviously, they cleared Sokolov and JBD off the uh, NHL roster today by clearing waivers. So that does give them a little bit more breathing room cap space-wise, but it also gives them a much smaller roster. They still need... Uh, either Norris or Norris replacement and one more player. So at the end of the day, uh, that's going to create a, a situation. But the Sens may not have to make a trade if Norris is, ends up on a long-term injury reserve situation. If he's not going to be ready and goes on LTIR, that's a, a game changer. As much as you don't want that to happen, it delays them having to make too many more decisions and they can get him on LTIR, get Pinto signed and then deal with it uh, once he's ready to come back. Uh, but there was a lot of people still think that they've talked to the Sharks, and that's going to be a landing spot probably for a guy like Matthew Joseph. But time will tell. They may be able to delay making that kind of decision and uh, transaction if Norris's injury is uh, more concerning than anybody had originally thought and certainly uh, more concerning than a lot of people want to let on 
as of right now. Now, another report as well from the Athletics still has the, uh, the prediction that the Maple Leafs are going to be making a trade early uh, before season or early season to, for cap flexibility, and they still suggest Kelly Yarncroke or TJ Brody as your main uh, trade targets. I don't think Brody's going anywhere, to be completely honest. If they do make a move, Yarn Croak would be the guy, I do think. He's got a good contract. He's a utility-type player. Had a good season last year playing higher in the lineup, but obviously with the guys that they brought in in the offseason between Bertuzzi and Domi and wanting to give a good chance to Matthew Nyes in the top six, top nine lines, like obviously... You know that does create a you know a spot for him to play lower in the lineup because he's likely not going to get that top six time like he did last year, and you know obviously that contract could be very valuable to use that money to be compliant or to spend on other uh, areas of the team. So Yarn Croak's also been held out of camp a lot this uh, preseason, which is unusual. And at this point, for the most part, the thing he's nursing an injury, which is fine. It just seems odd how he's being the main one mentioned when that's been coming up. So we'll have to see where that goes. Uh, I wouldn't be shocked if the Leafs do make a move. I know they want to sign, or at least it looks like they want to sign Noah Gregor, who's on uh, PTO in training camp. So to sign him and be compliant, get everything lined up here, uh, something has to give, and it could be Aaron Croak. I know that's, they're still convinced that that's going to be the way it goes. And could we see a big deal between the Hams and the Rangers? I know the Hockey News uh, article from Stan Fischler and Stefan Rosner analyzing the real possibility, in their opinion, that the Rangers deal former first overall pick Alexi Lafreniere. Now, we know in the first three years of his ELC, he's done okay, but not fantastic. Haven't We've seen some progress, but not as much as you'd think from somebody who was supposed to be an offensive explosive, uh, an explosive offensive player coming out of junior as a first overall selection in their draft year. Um, you know, I know this year going in with a new coach and uh, trying to change some lines and change things up a little bit. They were giving him more of a top six opportunity, and I mean, I haven't personally seen the Rangers a ton this preseason, but indications are it's not really working. And you know, golly, Brennan Othman apparently is getting a lot of attention. He's another high pick who's done. Uh, you know, worked really hard to, to find a way to get on this Rangers roster. And I guess their kind of conclusion here is maybe they finally cut bait with Lafreniere, who they feel could get bring a good return to help the area, uh, the team in other areas. And maybe more the role that he has could be given to a guy like Othman. Obviously, the Montreal Canadiens are the team they mentioned, given the fact that he was drafted by Jeff Gordon. So there's that connection there. The new, uh, you know, president and uh, or vice president, sorry, Montreal. Um, Montreal do, does have a lot of you know young players that could be intriguing to the Rangers for you know a swap. Obviously, he's you know French-born player in the province of Quebec, so it'll be a homecoming for him. It could be a very interesting move if they decide to pull the trigger. I know Chris Drury at this point between Lafreniere and Kako has been very patient and doesn't really want to move off these guys which you can understand they're high picks you want to give them every opportunity to succeed but i think it's fair to say that if things don't start well uh for lafreniere that you know i I think it's it could happen this year it's it's hard to say with any kind of certainty that it will if it's going to be results driven but if they give him every top six opportunity this year or especially in the first couple months of the year and he's not producing then obviously I would not be surprised if something like this takes place. Obviously, like I said, the Habs have a ton of options that they could offer up if they're interested. I don't know exactly what the trade would look like, but um, I think, you know, Lafreniere to the Habs, we've heard it before because of the connection to Jeff Gordon, because he's from Quebec. It's not the first time this has come up. We know the Habs are the ideal team right now who are looking to, because they've done this a couple of occasions. Look at Kirby Doc, prime example, get a highly drafted player that is not working out with their existing team and trying to bring them over to the Habs and kind of find a spot to make it work. And this could be a prime example where they do that. And like I said, it's been a long time since they've had a Quebec-born superstar. And they may see him as being that potential if they can unlock it and see where things go. I mean, they do have some other left wingers on the team that you know been you know earning some time and they're going to have to compete with if, if for him if he come, came over in our trade. But the end of the day i'd be curious to see what it would what they would offer up to the rangers i mean like i said they have lots of young players but 
what are the Rangers going to want? What would Montreal want in return? Be real curious to see if something does actually transpire. So let me know your thoughts on maybe what a mock trade would look like between the Rangers and the Canadians. Should they discuss a trade involving the former first overall pick, Alexi Lafreniere, going to Montreal? Things don't really pan out with the Rangers this season. Let me know your thoughts on all of today's news and rumors down in the comments. We'll discuss further. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with the latest news, rumors, and analysis of all 32 NHL teams. Thanks for watching. And I'll catch you next time.